welcome to Tunnel Talk, a no facts, all feelings wrestling podcast on the Social Suplex Network. I'm Allie. I'm Ann. I'm Leah. And when you started differently, so you really sultry. throw me off. <laughs> wow. That was, that was like a smooth jazz late mm. night. Yes. Oh, welcome back to the late <laughs> night welcome radio. It's back. Tunnel Talk. <laughs> Welcome to Tunnel Talk. No facts, <laughs> all feelings. <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> all feelings. <laughs> Just trying to give them a better sense of what they're actually going to get in here. Oh, it's important to, to not to not to get stuck in ruts. It's important to experiment to that's try right. new things. Hey, when uh, that's exactly right. When you try something, I need to say, Allie, that was really brave. That was really yeah. brave of you. Don't do it again. But brave. So brave. I'm doing what we ask the wrestlers to do so often. I'm mixing it mm. up and just seeing what works. Try a new mm. gimmick. Try a new gimmick. The new gimmick is Delilah. <laughs> we did what if our new gimmick one week was all facts and we came in here with a bunch of rating stuff? Whoa. Oh, my God. But, do you okay, think that wh- even for April Fool's Day, if we really committed with all our hearts, do you think we could manage an hour of facts? Ugh. No, but what if we made them all up? But we just oh. acted like they were real. A little parody episode. Oh my that God. could be fun. We gaslit the fun. shit out of everybody. And yeah. we were just and like. And the thing is, half the IWC would just believe it, I think, given the information state out there. Oh, now, yeah. The was that thing, convincing? Yeah. What if we did an episode where we pretend that we are running our taxi cab? Uh, wrestling company <laughs> told told me to do it, and we're just on here <laughs> chit chatting about the just like what it's like to run a wrestling oh. company. And oh. yeah, you know what I thought show? you were gonna yeah. say is that you that we did a review pod, and you were like, "All right, so last week on Taxi <laughs> Cab Tech TV, <laughs> Cockpuncher Daryl said." <laughs> And we just did a run through and me and Anne are like, you know, the match was good. It was good. I mean, I wasn't bored when I was pumping my vehicle. Like I stood there happily the whole time. I would just say there wasn't like a lot of pumping there my there. vehicle. I really think that sounded different than it should. Okay, I thought well, if it was the promotion we were running, it was like, well, of course we have 20 Chuck Taylor matches to review this week. <laughs> Best friends still tag champions. Like, are we thinking the run's getting stale or are we still excited about it, ladies? People are screaming. They're like, it's been five years. It's been literally five years. You say that you have 20 Chuck Taylor matches to review. They're not matches. They're just little sketches that you have him do. You just made him have a conversation with Orange Cassidy. You filmed it. It's not a match. It's not a quote unquote match. But like every, but great every week. Unique. It's Every week we put them in a different outfit for it. It's like, oh, they're they're wearing suits and they're doing business boy stuff. We, we kind of treat him like he treats his dog, just buying little <laughs> outfits off Amazon. Put it a minute. I kind of think that we could get him on board for that if we did like. You know, with toddlers, when it's like something has got to happen, but you're just like giving them options. Like you're trying to give mm. them the illusion of choice. Uh-huh. So if we did a little thing where it's like, okay, you're going to be wearing this type of outfit, but you can go on Etsy and choose anyone oh. you want. <laughs> yeah. I, I think do be think, he yeah, I do think of all the things that we're going to ask Chuck Taylor to do, the thing he would fight us on least is wearing a costume. Yeah. Uh-huh. He'd like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. He does love putting on little, especially if we tell him that his friends will match with him. Oh yeah. my God, he'll mm-hmm. be so happy. He'll be so into it. Some and of the someone, other stuff he might fight. Some of the other stuff he might not like. But then if people <laughs> make fun of his outfits, he's so smugly just going to say, they told me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and they such a are the, for the... <laughs> <laughs> And they oh, are just right. <laughs> billionaires that own me, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> when they say jump, I just ask how high. <laughs> I don't it's think he would fight circus. us. I'm like, just living in it. <laughs> Dustin, Dustin, if you let uh, little Orange mm. Cassidy sit on your shoulders and you guys whack mm. somebody with a pool noodle, we'll get you ringside yeah. for Sixers games. He's not going to fight oh, us. Oh my He's going to say, yeah. hey. Oh my God, you're so right. Hey, OC, yeah, we get just up there. <laughs> buy a box of the Sixers and we don't even have to pay him a sale. Should we oh buy the Sixers? <laughs> oh. Oh. And we fill it with cute boys. Oh. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah. <laughs> we buy the Sixers and we're like, Dustin, if you do everything we ask you to do and you're a great little employee, we'll let you help choose the Sixers. <laughs> <laughs> Only cute boys. You can cast the cutest boys you want on the Sixers. I like that's that you said such cast a good point. them. <laughs> yeah, that's how you, that's how you fill up a basketball team. 
It's called a casting call. <laughs> it's called a little audition. Do you think that if we were billionaires, we could honestly ruin most sports? I hope oh, yeah. so. Totally I would try. Ruin a sport. Yeah. I would try for sure. Like, what I saw sport today that... we ruin first? Oh, football? Yeah, yeah. you're right. What did mm. you see today, Ann? Oh, that... Um, Tony Khan is putting on a wrestling match before the Jaguars' first game. And I was I like, that's that. a pretty I good idea. I do see that, and I like where he, where his mind's at. I yeah, would love make to him watch see. it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he owns, like, them and a soccer game, right? So, like, before yeah. every match at home, yeah. there should be, like, a little dark match, you know? A like little send. exhibition. Yeah. yeah. Get your flippiest boys out there. Yeah. And we could be doing that when we own the Sixers, you know? Of course, oh, we'll right. do that yeah, when we own course. the Sixers, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Best friends of the cheerleaders. I, yeah. I yeah. I oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great costume. We dress them in a little outfit. Yeah, a little cheerleader that's outfit. That's nice. And that's we say, cute. Dustin, we told you you were going to be ringside. Not ringside. Mm-hmm. That's not what they call it. Ringside. Court side. Court side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great at sports, you guys. I'm really impressed. <laughs> And Allie was worried we wouldn't have anything to talk about in the open. Well, it's certainly not chit chat about our lives, just the lives we wish that we had. Um, everybody, everybody healthy, hale, and hearty this week, oh, in mind thriving. and in spirit. Oh, really thriving. None, none of us are really, but we no. are. We're just gonna I was push like, through. I was on a business trip, and I feel like honestly dazed. I had to get up so early and work all day long. It was horrible. That's so sick. It was disgusting. Meanwhile, my cat is on a hunger strike, so I haven't slept normally in like a week, and I spent all of Dynamite in an ER, so then I had to watch it alone, and also it was mega spoiled to begin with, so I was like, oh, I didn't like this experience. Yeah, it was to watch together. And it was terrible. You weren't there. Like, I had skidded it again because of my business trip. I, like, skidded it at the last minute. I was behind on all our group chat channels. And then, like, no one was, like, live watching. And I was like, what's happening? And then Allie showed up. And I was about to be like, where the hell is Leah? And then I clicked (laughs) on the Pets channel and saw that. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I didn't uh, do that. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) At the emergency bed. (laughs) That's cool. Godspeed. Yeah. Yeah, can't yell at can't yell at someone for for that. Even if you do wish that they were there watching wrestling with you instead, I did wish it. Yeah. I wish that was with you guys. Mm-hmm. I hope that Cher gets her act together. Me yeah. too. I would say me too. Yeah, because uh, watching Dynamite in the bra in the in the sunlight by yourself mm. when you don't know how <laughs> things are going to go, anyways. I I couldn't. I did not want to be there again. Yeah, no. that's really rough. Do you know, it's like, I think, I think I've made this joke before, but like, you never leave your ID at a bar and then you have to go back and (laughs) get it during the day. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I thought this place was cool, but now it's it's really freaking me out. We spent how many hours here last night? (laughs) Honestly, that's kind of how I feel about All In, like Wembley when it's one in the afternoon and I'm... In the broad light of day. It's not Oof. right. Not right. We need to be doing this under the car- cover of darkness. Yeah. Wrestling requires really specific circumstances <laughs> to feel right and no. good for <laughs> us. For and us it requires for everyone. your friends to be with you. It should yeah. be at night on a Wednesday. Night. Absolutely. <laughs> if, Tony ever, if Tony ever moves this show, we're fucked, girls. It's people, over for us. People kept saying, like, oh, because... WWE is moving things like Dynamite might move. Are they moving something to Wednesday? I don't. I I don't think. I don't know if any anything's ever been settled out. But I saw people speculating it a couple months ago, and I genuinely was like, moving it off Wednesday would destroy this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) We have a (laughs) We're very fragile. We can't take it. We better write. We better write Tony a little letter about that. Just to make sure that he's keeping it in mind as he makes his decisions. Um, a quick little uh, reminder for the listeners: uh, we have scheduled a live Twitch stream for Sunday, September twenty second, eight seven Central. Uh, we will be doing this. Will be one of our bonus episodes where we're watching matches that we got from you guys, uh, and we're very excited for it. I think a little nervous, but excited. Yeah. yeah, if it goes a little weirdly, if we have to, if we have some audio issues, you can't make fun of us because it's you have to be nice uh, to us. It's the first you have pancake, to be really nice. 
We're not yeah. streamers, yeah. streamers yeah. you know. No, we're just we're women. <laughs> yeah. And just if we say women. something weird that we can't <laughs> cut, like you have to promise to oh be my nice God. about that too. Oh my God. You, it'll it be our little be, secret. Yeah. It has yeah. to be our little us. secret. And yeah. we'll cut mm-hmm. it from the podcast version and you can't tell them. You no. have to, and we'll gaslight people about it. Yeah. If they say like, I heard you said this, we'll say no. it never happened. It never I happened. Know. It nope. never happened. Yeah. But there's really not that much that we could say that I'm <laughs> embarrassed about at this point. Most things are on the table. So I know. I used <laughs> to be much fine. more embarrassed. I would be like, you can't say that. We're on the record. But now I don't care. I know, yeah. dude. I was just talking about it with my, you know what? Oh, we'll talk about it afterwards. But <laughs> you know, we won't get into it here. Now we can say show hole as much as we want. That's, that's exactly true. what I was. That's exactly what I was thinking about. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking about. Um, and then uh, the Social Suplex Network also has a little something special in the works, mm-hmm. and there's something coming at the end of really the month. Really cool. Something's you should be really excited about what it is. It's gonna that's be great. Tease. You, are, mm-hmm. you have been teased. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel it? <laughs> are you getting? Are you getting? Did that hyped? work? Are you getting <laughs> do you, stoked? Do you feel a shiver of antic- anticipation? Yeah. yeah. You'll like it. It's you're, gonna be good. Yeah, you're gonna like it, and you're gonna, and it's gonna happen. You know. <laughs> you can be sure like those it, two gonna happen. Things. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Should we talk about the wrestling? Let's do it. Sure. It's a Friday night for us. We usually record yeah. on Thursdays, and uh, because of Ann's uh, busy business trip, we are recording on Friday, and that's disorienting. It's a little, it is. A little. All little. day I kept thinking, oh, thank God I can like go to bed early and sleep forever. I don't have to do anything. Wait, the podcast! Like I did that once an hour all day, so. Yeah. I had a it little was bit a- of a Friday party vibe, yeah. too, where I'm yeah. like, who knows what could happen. I know. Well, I did like, you were like, maybe I'll have a beer. And I was like, we could do anything. It's not a school night. I'm actually having, I'm actually having a whiskey ginger instead. Whoa. That is fancy. Delightful. Cheers, girls. Cheers. (laughs) Uh, Were you going to say something else, Leah? No. No. (laughs) So we've got uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, We saw All Out. Over last weekend, uh, just let's just do some broad thoughts on the show before we get into the particulars. Did you guys have a nice time? Definitely yeah. nastier than all in. I'll say that. For <laughs> it is absolute dank filth. Compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so many people brought it too. It was, I mean, obviously the main event, but like mm, Willow well, and Chris. That's like, yeah. Mm. What was what was so nice about making that the main event is that I felt like the whole card was like, okay, so this show is going to end in like an orgy of absolute depravity. And so, mm-hmm. if I want to be part of the conversation, I've got to give it. <laughs> I've got to give it my all. I got to do the weirdest most violent like craziest stuff and try just try to make it into the conversation mm. yeah a bunch of these people really did really yeah. really did you're right they they clearly did have it in mind that it's like if i just do a normal standard yeah. match like no yeah. one's gonna say a word about no me. one's gonna remember it mm. which is true hey so it was, it was i was proud of everybody i enjoyed the experience i, ex- I experienced electricity as i yeah. watched mm. Yeah. I would say the atmosphere was a lot more electric than it was in Monday. <laughs> I don't want to upset anybody, but I would agree. To yeah. me, it was scads more electricity Great. than mm-hmm. I experienced. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely. And it went by so fast. It like the evening oh, yeah. flew. It was like, yeah. oh, it's already eleven. Crazy. It was nonstop. One so. of the top top pay per views that I've seen, I think. Oh yeah. Well, one of the top pay-per-views for sickos, better than all in. We're all out girls. Uh, all out girls. I think we better get into the details. We're starting with uh, with little MJF and Danny Garcia. Well, I guess it's normal MJF and little Danny Garcia. Uh, they opened the pay-per-view. <laughs> MJF did win the match. Uh, he offered Garcia uh, like a hand of respect after the match, and Danny Garcia took it. And then MJF, of course, tried to knee him in the balls, but Danny saw it coming. That's why he had taken the hand, and he countered, and he kneed MJF in the balls. And then he, quote, spiked him with a pile driver off the turnbuckles, which... 
I don't know why I felt like I had to read that. Like, <laughs> I think that you like worried that people were going to be like, Allie, where did you get that? <laughs> you knew that if you didn't put it in quotes, we'd be like, how did you learn those words? <laughs> and you just knew what that you were a this. <laughs> What kind of plagiarism oh is this? Oh my God. He did some damage to him that um, suggests that MJF, I think the, the backstage uh, news is that MJF will be off TV for a little bit. Um, Danny, I don't think that we have seen or heard from since. Could that be right? Feels right. That's now, right, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. If you're going to write off MJF, why couldn't he have lost? I would have made him lose, for sure. I would hey, have made him lose. When our gas pump company comes off, goes off the, <laughs> you know, gets, gets off the ground, MJF will lose. When like, we start pumping cars, he's going to be doing jobs. <laughs> You wouldn't think that the gas station TV company that we would create might employ Dax Harwood, but we just have him get humiliating loss after humiliating loss, and there's nothing you can do about it. He'll take our money, and he'll lose. Yeah. (laughs) Dax becomes like Tony Nese. Like, you only see Mm -hmm. him when Mm -hmm. (laughs) when you're like, oh, yeah, okay, this is squash. We say, it's like we're always doing stuff to him where we're like, we just need you to walk through this room. And he looks into the room and the floor is covered in banana peels. And then he looks at us like, don't make me do it, girls. And we say, you hey, just have to walk hey, through the room. I told Dax, you to do it. Dax, it's for your family. It's, it's for, for your daughter. Your daughter needs America. this, Dax. <laughs> you're sitting there, you're pumping gas at the pump and you look at the TV and Dax says, this is for my family. And then he walks across a hundred banana peels. Oh, he just slips, slips, slips and he slips. And slides. Oh, it's funny. It's so funny. <laughs> You're like, this is the best tank of gas I ever purchased. I like the degree to which we're struggling to stay engaged with reality when we have our <laughs> when we have our other world to play in. This is like just, what people worried about with VR, you know, and he just like you won't ever take it off. I just had a thought that, like, in our producer's world where we're trying to lose money, we accidentally become mega rich because people keep patronizing this gas station because they're like, I can't get enough of Banana Man. It's only Dax one gas station, hit, and then... but it's the most popular gas station in the country. There's lines, lines around the block. It looks like the Carter administration. It's crazy. <laughs> And then we're like, well, Dax is moving numbers. We got to give him we more gotta, time. Hey, let's move him from pump six to pump five. <laughs> they're all very competitive about which pump they're on. That's our rankings. <laughs> we brought back the rankings. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this match was totally fine. Yeah. Totally unobjectionable. Um, I don't think that it made sense for MJF to win. I don't think he has to win as much as he does. I think he could win less, less and lose yeah. more. Yeah. I'm, yeah, tired of him. And he's not really doing anything to win me back. And I do feel like he, like, is seeing all the, like, swerve hangman, people going crazy for them. And then he's trying to do these little, like, giving Danny Garcia kisses on his bloody face. And it's like... Man, this is not working for you. It's not sexy when it's artificial. Like this yeah. is not who your character is. Right. So it's you're it's not, a real lack of understanding of what makes something compelling. Right. It's right. like you're not inventing sex. You're just doing things mm-hmm. you saw in a porn. Right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And, and you don't even deal. like those things. Like <laughs> <laughs> not right. even a porn you like. <laughs> Right, and and you had said something in the in your note. You said MJF the character doesn't care about doing violence; he cares about protecting his own image. And I'm like, yeah, like why doesn't he ever commit to that? Because there's actually a really yeah. good storyline here where it's like he comes back. Like if you wanted to do something where he comes back and he's like, fine, you turned on me when I turned face. I'm gonna try to do the thing that I got over doing. I'm gonna be the stupidest, jerkiest, meanest heel, and I'm gonna do everything possible and that fails too because he lost against yeah. Osprey and he mm-hmm. lost a, against Danny Garcia and the Danny Garcia hit like loss hits him and suddenly he's he's out he's taking these long walks in the dark and he's saying if I'm not a face and I can't be the heel that I once was who am I like hello mm-hmm. I would be so into that 
Yeah. And then he comes back to Dynamite and he sings the Les Mis song, Who Am I? <laughs> <laughs> and we get a little musical number, but it, the tonally it's quite different than usual. When yeah. you said a Les Mis song, I immediately was like, I dreamed of dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a different one. I actually know quite a few Les Mis songs. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it is like you have to, to get a real psychosexual storyline going, you have to be true to the spirit of that character. And it's like Mox is very physical, very violent, very, and he's always leaning and looking at people's mouths. And it's like there's a real animalistic quality. So it's like, yeah, of course that's psychosexual. Like Hangman and Squirrel crafted this whole feud around hating each other. And like yeah. MJF needs to lean into who MJF is and what gets to him and what, right. you know. He takes too far. Like I said, there's also, there's kind of a question of, it's like, why are you in this business? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, of all the things in the world that you could have decided to do with the person that you are, why are you here? Yeah. Right. Yeah, why aren't you in a musical theater company, you know? Yeah. Two roads maybe, diverged. Maybe he is. Like, I love violence. I mean, he hasn't showed that to us, but... No, it'd be a new dimension, certainly. But he could try to make me believe it. I don't believe right. it right now, as he's... I don't believe it right now, no. Right. No, I mean, I think the thing that he is committed to is that he loves being loved, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's obsessed with uh, audience reaction. And he, when he couldn't get it at first, he would insult them to get any sort of reaction. But he like mm-hmm. when he started getting positive reaction, he went soft for it so quickly. And he was a complete sucker for Adam Cole because he'd never been mm. loved. Like, that's yeah. the thing that he shouldn't be expanding on. Like, mm-hmm. I am a character who goes craven about being loved. So yeah. what does that mm-hmm. what does that mean for my relationship to wrestling? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, MJF. We may not see you for a little while. Uh, I hope that we see Danny Garcia sooner. I'd like to see him back. Um, Yeah. But I don't know when that will be. Let's move on to the real... Let's move on to the real stuff, okay? Okay. Enough of of these knockoffs. (laughs) Let's let's get the name brand. Swerve and Hangman. (laughs) They had their absolutely insane uh, Lights Out Cage match. It was a new experience it was crazy i'm like concerned if they ever let them fight again because it's like this is escalated to the point where it's like i think someone will just commit full-on murder on screen mm-hmm. next time because they're where else can they go but it was like have to come back to fundamentals in some way like you'd have when you take it that little. you'd have to really pivot in a different direction yeah yeah, but they had like a real cinder block they were throwing each other onto. They were sta- they stapled right out of the gate with the staple gun. Yeah. Of course the syringe spot. When you, when you said that we'd have to come back to fundamentals, somehow my brain skipped to be like, and then they'll just do a lucha match where it's like they're so busy being on the top rope that they forget to actually hit each other. And they never like, touch. They never no, touch. They're, just, they're just doing, they're just doing angry flips, flips over at each around other. each other. That's right. That is our hey, fundamentals. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> Uh, we had some, we had some like build to the match during the pay-per-view. So we saw them, actually we saw a number of people like entering the building, which I thought was a really fun touch. I liked that. I loved Mm -hmm. it because there was some people that really pulled off, like pretending that the camera wasn't there and just like moving, you know, unconsciously. And then there were some people, I think Matt Menard did the funniest (laughs) thing where he's like, I'm not looking at the camera, but I'm strutting and I'm not looking at the camera. And I'm like, I'm not even, I can't, I don't even know what cameras are. And he just did like the funniest, like I forgot how my body all works together. (laughs) I don't, I don't know what a camera is, but you're getting my good side, right? Yeah. I'm not paying attention to you, but it's this one. (laughs) Uh, and then we also saw uh, Hangman and Swerve in their dressing rooms, surrounded by guards, p- preventing them from getting at each other. And I kind of said, let them get at each other. <laughs> Maybe. Lights out anyway. Let's get started. They were sequestered in their dressing rooms with armed guards for the whole pay-per-view. Delightful. That was very fun. Uh, what did you guys think about? So it was like... It was a really different match than their other matches and, like, kind of any ma- match that I can think of because the pace was, like, pretty slow. Mm-hmm. Like, 
they're stuck in this cage together. Like, their vibe wasn't like, we have to do violence to each other as fast as possible. It was like, okay, well, you're trapped in here now. So let me just get my next saw trap set up for you. (laughs) Yeah, it was so interesting because I think it's like this one was so memorable and so good, but I almost like the Texas death match one a little bit better, I think, just for the pacing. But I think the pacing, like, worked with how crazy the violence yes. was. right, right. Yeah, I thought I it think, was interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it could have gotten, like, if they had tried to top the Texas death, death match, like, a do a, like, different, like, a better version of it, I think they would have mm-hmm. failed, and so they had to yeah. try something different which i think they succeeded at but it was different and i did like the texas death match better partially because it also was just more shocking you know like i just yeah. think i spent the texas death match my, my entire time with like my mouth like wide yeah open. like oh my god right it's Versus, so funny your expectations going yeah. in because yeah i didn't expect the texas death to be as violent as it was whereas i was expecting this one to be extremely violent which it was but i was also expecting it to be faster pace so it was like an yeah. interesting little offset s- something about the way that it was a little slower made it feel all the more brutal. Like, like, I don't know, like a steamroller coming at you and you can't yeah. move. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was, there was like a discomfort to it Ooh. as a viewer mm-hmm. where yeah. you kind of were like, am I supposed to be watching this? Like, this is, <laughs> should right. you be doing that? And should I be seeing it? I'm not sure. Whereas yeah. the I, Texas death right. match, I very much was like, I love blood. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I saw a bunch of people being like, the audience was pretty quiet for the cage match. And I'm like, I'm sure they didn't know what they were supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I at home was like, I don't know what to do. I didn't even notice them being quiet. Like, yeah, Yeah. I saw that Discord and I was like, they seemed into it to me. I don't know. I did think it was funny afterwards, though, because there was quite a bit of discourse about how did they go too far and stuff. But the last time there was that discourse, they were all like, women hate it. And then all the women on the internet were like, we're going to murder you because we love it. (laughs) Um, And this time I noticed they had dropped that. And this time it was about the children. Uh, Oh, yes, the children. They're not on Twitter, so they can't speak for themselves. They can't speak for themselves. (laughs) Yeah, They can't argue with you and, and... Say, please, you're an idiot. No, yeah, no. Instead, <laughs> instead, the argument was that all of the children who were awake at midnight and had gotten <laughs> access to a pay per view mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. a match that had been uh, advertised as unsanctioned were somehow yeah. like traumatized by this. And I was like, okay. Right. I have, like, no t- well, I have no time for that kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> A, children are going to see. Look, they, I, I don't think children should be up at midnight watching unsanctioned death matches. But a, children are gonna see fucked up shit. It's just, that's just life, baby. They want to see it. They thirst for it. <laughs> but it is and like if you the, took your kids it's to a the fucking midnight parenting sh- issue. It's like, yeah, yeah. The if you par- took your kids to see Saw and then you were like, they were so upset. It's like, well, I feel like that's on you. Yeah, honestly. they put the man in a trap. Like, it's Saw Five. Did yeah. you watch the other four <laughs> <Right>. Saws? <laughs> If you let watch your child a watch a hangman too. swerve match now, yeah, you, yeah, you deserve everything. We shouldn't even be engaging with it. As no, it's, like, it's so just like it's bad children. faith. It's, yeah, there's no, no actual It's just children. they didn't like it because they're tiny little babies, yeah, which is yeah. very you cute. You don't have to like it. You can like other oh, things. There's all kinds of stuff. You could have turned it off. Well, you that's the thing. It's the main event. Turn it off. Like there was no reason. If you knew that you didn't, you weren't going to like this match. Yeah. It was the main event. You could just go to bed. And we I so know. often say, oh, well, the men loved this match and it wasn't for me, but that's okay. And they never yeah. seem to be able to do they that. They never so. reciprocate. They never no. reciprocate. You say, no. men, let the women have their disgusting syringe through the cheek match. Oh <laughs> we I mean, let them have a cold, drizzly British summer. With, with, we did complain. complain we did complain, one. but like less complaining than you'd expect. But and I was, can't have... Was, constructive one, criticism one <laughs> dank autumn night hello yeah oh my god Please. the winds the winds were blowing <laughs> the, the the leaves were bursting up in eddies all over the, the dark streets <laughs> it was the end of the of practical magic the three of us mm. were on top of the roof with mm. our uh brooms cackling yeah. it was the best of times and it was yeah. the best of times i became mm-hmm. a woman mm-hmm. At all, oh, at all out. for the first time. Just yeah. now. Wow. Just- <laughs> 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 well, <Wow. laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, you heard well, it here my, first pri- 
My co-hosts are always mad at me for not sharing, but then I share, and suddenly they're all uncomfortable. Not uncomfortable, just surprised. I guess, I guess, in my mind, she had been a woman for. <laughs> I shared what was making me happy. Suddenly, that's wrong. Hey, Leah. Yeah. Thank you for your happiness, <laughs> and, and thank you for your womanhood. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's really good match. Um, Allie, describe, uh, elaborate on the bullet. This was like that IWTV scene. Oh, I was thinking about uh, the Louis Lassat fight where that you get from the two points of view where oh. he takes him up into the air and oh, yes, drops yes, him. Yes, and yes, 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 yes. I was that was Those, the that horrible of... scene of domestic violence that you're talking about. <laughs> okay, stop it. <laughs> I can't have Twitter discourse with you, Anne. <laughs> Anne, don't do this to me. I liked the match very much. It was uh, good. Hangman took out a little a burned piece of wood from Swerve's house to stake him with, like a vampire. Oh, my God. The way I immediately went into, like, a Buffy place, and I was like, mm-hmm. he doesn't want to stake him, but he has mm-hmm. to stake him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he did want to stake him. Well... <laughs> Not, I mean, wanted, it'd be one of those things where the second he did, and, and if Swerve disappeared into ash in yeah. the fan, he'd, he'd feel an unbearable loss he could never yes. mm-hmm. recover right. from. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. hard to lose a nemesis. You, a yeah. nemesis is someone that you hate so bad, you never want to be parted from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at this point, <laughs> Hangman and Swerve define themselves against the other. So it's yeah. like, oh my mm-hmm. God. If I'm Hangman and I don't have Swerve, who am I? Who am mm-hmm. I? Wow, mm-hmm. that song again. Let's get it on the, let's get it on the show. Uh, after ha- That's Swerve's new theme music. <laughs> <laughs> and Nana's uh, still dancing to it. <laughs> that would be very funny. Um, after Hangman won, so he uh, Swerve passed out. Hangman was leaving. He had a moment up by the tunnels that was a who am I moment, clearly, of just mm-hmm. like, he just looked like a man who was kind of clearing the fog and being like, where am I? Like, what's yeah. happening here? It's and like, he turned around. It was very like, wait, I did what? What did I just do? <laughs> what was that? Right. Yeah. And he turned around and he looked at the ring and he started walking back towards the ring. And the crowd, there was a like deep you know, like kind of murmur from the crowd. And then someone, and as somebody pointed out, this person she should have been a paid actor, <laughs> screamed. <laughs> like shrieked. Yeah. It was oh so my goodness. Good. And then he stopped and he left through the heel tunnel. I really mm-hmm. liked this. I think people had different kind of interpretations of what was going on and were kind of arguing a little about like, well, did, was Hangman in his right mind the whole time? Or, like, does it take away from it to be, like, he kind of woke from a dream? But I don't think it... I To me, it makes sense that it's, like, yes, it was all done and planned very deliberately, but that you have moments of clarity in your life where it's, mm-hmm. like, you're looking at yourself from outside your body, being, like, girl... <laughs> How did we get here? What's happening yeah. here? And then, but like, there's nothing you can do about it. You're like, well, I can't stay outside of my body. I'm going to have to go back into my body with the choices that I've made. And that's mm-hmm. what he did. And he left through the hill tunnel. Yeah. Real moment of uh, what's going on. And he did that, that like s- s- crazy scream and like fall to his knees at the top too. Like monstrous yeah. where it's like, oh, he is suddenly realized who he has turned into over the last six months more than that to think about it's interesting though because i've seen people discuss it as like like that he regrets it or that like he more he was had a face of like mourning who he was and i sort of didn't get that like i almost felt like when he started towards the ring again it was almost like i'm not done i I want to oh. keep chasing this monster feeling like I like it like he would and then he like stopped himself but like there was a moment where he's like I have like I've I've never like I've I've I felt something I felt the the orgy of violence like was addictive and I have to have more and then he stopped himself and went back and was like no I'm done I won I has to be enough but like I didn't quite get the like regret that other people like pointed out. 
I think I didn't see it as regret, but I mm-hmm. did see it as kind of like, I don't know, like morally neutral kind of, like a moment of just being like, I need to go see what happened. Yeah. Like I am now back in my body. I need to see what happened in that ring. And then the crowd reacts like you are a monster. And it's like, oh, I was a monster in the ring. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess so. Like, <laughs> I guess now that I'm a monster, I simply must be the monster. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. But that also is like the kind of story that I like. So I'm more likely to interpret it that way. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I think that's very interesting. So that's what I choose to believe. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, like, what he does in follow-up because, well, I mean, we already did, I guess, a little bit, but um, I kind of I like that you could interpret it a few yeah. different ways, yeah. honestly. Right. right. It's fun. Um, Hangman had a promo on Dynamite this week uh, where he said he regrets nothing, and uh, he, he got, I didn't get the text of the promo, but it was really st- st- strong, powerful language, uh, and then he said he's going to murder anyone who got in his way while he was trying to get swerve and then he this was a kind of a funny little wrestling setup scene where there were all these little packets of men (laughs) around him for him to briefly engage with it was very musical theater actually to be like the sailors the the fishmongers uh the dark order were like we don't even know who you are and then he had a he got into a little thing with jeff jarrett Uh, jeff jarrett lectured him i think Mm. Jeff Jarrett said something, but I was really distracted by his hair. So I, really <laughs> I don't remember too, what think, he said. I think his hair next to Hangman's really makes you think about the exact shade of Jeff Jarrett's hair in a way that you isn't are pleasant. Right. You're right. And he had a very deep tan, too. And so it was just kind of like a beautiful golden god and yeah. someone who is like playing a golden god on Hercules. <laughs> But like on a cheap version of like it's not even like mm-hmm. I, I mean like, Hercules I like, is already pretty cheap but like yeah, even, even worse, cheaper yeah, yeah knock even off, worse knock off Hercules like, um, a community theater yeah <laughs> one of my best friends had this thing where she was like I will never uh, dye my hair blonde because at some point when I get older somebody's gonna make me go blonde and I was constantly like what does that mean and make she's like I don't blonde. know when you get older you go to a hair salon and you just come out blonde that's just what happens <laughs> and like. I was like, that had, like I don't think that that's right. And she was like, look around. Once you start seeing the old ladies, you start seeing it. And you know They're what? Blonde? Jeff Jarrett does have the old lady blonde color. Like the he does. Like, Although is she, is she just mixing up blonde with white hair at that no, point? No, no. It's that. It's the yellow covering gray old lady color. I'm going to say this to you guys, and now you guys got to start looking around, and you got to look for okay, a lady I of look. a certain age who has very short hair that you know that they dyed it by putting it, like, in one of the dryers that, like, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That blonde. That kind of a clip. Okay. I'm going to look for, I'm going to be looking for old ladies, which is my pleasure to do. <laughs> uh, and I'll keep you updated on what I notice. <laughs> um Hangman, I don't. I guess it hasn't been booked, but I think we were kind of assuming that we'll get Hangman Jeff Jarrett. I mean, get like it'll happen to us at uh, <laughs> Grand Slam, which is what we're booking for now. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the segment and the direction? My time to be mad that Jeff Jarrett was involved in this was some <laughs> weeks ago, <laughs> and we were, and, and we, we were. were. To and be we fair, were. when it happened, we said, "Why is he here?" But mm-hmm. he is here, and we do here. finish this off. So fine. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, of course, I wish it wasn't happening, but it's been happening to me all summer, and it's like a two-week build to a non-pay-per-view, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. For me, it would kind of be crazier if it didn't happen after the amount of time that we spent, <laughs> for some reason, building to it happening. Like, do yeah. I think that we should have spent so much of the summer building a Hangman Jeff Jarrett sub feud? <laughs> no, I don't think it made sense. I don't think anything Jeff Jarrett did all summer made sense. I don't think it makes sense, but it's like well, all all that's left is the epilogue. Let's just write the yeah. epilogue and get right. out of here yeah, so we don't circle back on it later. Close like, yeah, the it's book. fine. Right. It's I that know. meeting thing that you said. What is the thing you called it where once once everybody decides mm. on a direction, you're just, just yeah. and commit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We disagreed, but we committed now. <laughs> we committed. We're yeah. in it. We said, okay, fight Jeff There's... Jarrett. Let's get it over with. There's a certain kind of wrestling discourse where they're like, this shouldn't be happening. And you're like, well, given 
the last however many months, like what would you suggest instead? And the answer is kind of like go back in time and make it not happen. And it's like, I mean, if we had the technology, sure. sure. Like I'd we, love to, but I wouldn't have started sadly. there. We like, did our <laughs> part at the time. Right. <laughs> right. But if I had time travel fixing things capabilities, I wouldn't be that worried about Jeff Jarrett. I would have stopped I them ha- oh my hiring God. CM Punk. All I'd right. go for Hitler personally, but <laughs> okay. okay. And you're oh, going to find it very hey. busy back there. Hey. You're going to find it very busy, and you're not going to be able to get anything done. Okay. <laughs> I think this podcast is on the record for saying that Hitler must not be okay. <laughs> no, okay. I wasn't there. I did different not take ways there. I think this is one to settle off. <laughs> um, it's just happening. It's happening. It's fine. It's happening. Let's just it's... let it happen. He's got to do something, so, yeah. And to be clear, this is not us going limp to it. It's just, like, it's, that's the story. That's the story that you told all summer. I don't know why. Maybe Hangman wants to fight Jeff Jarrett. Right. Maybe Jeff Jarrett wants to fight Hangman. Maybe Uh, Tony really wants to see them touch each other. It's not my business. (laughs) Well, there's, like, also a level to which I'm, like, it's Grand Slam. And I understand that it's a stadium show, so it feels important to people. But I don't care about tickets, and I never have. I'm not being asked to pay money for Grand Slam. So, to me, Mm. it is not that much more important than any other Dynamite. So, if you want to put Hangman Jeff Jarrett on Dynamite, sure. I don't give a shit. And then, like... If you were like building this so that like we're like if somebody was saying to me, "Oh, Hangman hey Jeff Jarrett is going to be full gear." And so then I was like looking down the yeah. barrel of like months of Hangman hey Jeff Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd be yes, mad. Yeah. I would be yeah, complaining. Be I would you, I would not be happy. <laughs> but instead I'm like, "All right, so we got two weeks of Jeff Jarrett on a non-pay-per-view. I don't care." Right. Sure. And then you can go fine. into like our real feud. That's not a problem. That's and if Tony just... wants to see them touch each other, you know, that's Tony's business. Tony, your preferences are your own. And <laughs> we are we are so <laughs> magnanimous when you feed us just a little. Like you gave yeah. us that swerve hangman, and now we're yeah, out there like, please take a pump for yourself. <laughs> one for you, one for me. One for you, one for me. <laughs> take a pump for yourself. <laughs> you just pump in there, buddy. Just one or two pumps. All for you. <laughs> I meant like, you know, like our I did, I like know. one through six. <laughs> the gas so station like... pump. Yeah. Not the verb, the noun. Yeah, I know. That's uh <laughs> let's just get out our milking stool and get down the rest. Oh god. Should we stop the podcast? A little bit. I'm like, Marjorie. <laughs> Just call it a day. Marjorie, <laughs> cut all of Marjorie, that. Can you please, oh my let's gosh. just wind this over into the sultry, uh, our sultry intro. <laughs> We've simply got to move on to Brian Danielson and Jack Perry. They had a title match at All Out, and Danielson won. And afterwards, Christian Cage and the Patriarchy came out, I guess, to attack Brian Danielson because Christian is going to fight him because he has because he won a little poker chip and he gets to have a fight with him, something like that. And um, Mox and PCC came out to defend Danielson, and that drove the Patriarchy off. And Danielson looked so grateful and smug, like, wow, they're such good friends and they're so (laughs) good to me. And they all got in the ring and Mox... Gave Danielson a big hug. And it looked and he, like such a like good, good hug. hug. It was a kind of great hug he gives Eddie. Like it was yeah. like full body. He nestled Brian Danielson into his bosom. He had him at oh the back God. of his neck and was like gently yeah. cupping. And I was so, like, he, he what kissed his forehead. Yeah. It was the, the full like, business. Ugh. To me, it was like, Brian Danielson, what did you do to earn this? But <laughs> I guess it's, I guess you get it. But then luckily moments later, um, Mox attacked him and he murdered him. He did a full, it was the, actually the first murder of the night, maybe the third or fourth. I don't know. There were a lot of murders. <laughs> uh, he murdered him, beat him up and Claudio's beating him up and Mox suffocated him with a plastic bag and uh, Pack was holding Yuta back on the other side of the ropes. Yuta was screaming, shrieking for his granddaddy, uncle, <laughs> father. I think it's his father, I his guess. His deadbeat dad, yeah. It's his yeah. father, yeah. He was full know. on crying. It was his upset. Face crying. Had he did a really good job. Rumbled. Yeah, he was like, great. Yeah. It was, I mean, and he, the way he was like reaching around Pack, and Pack was like, implacable about holding him back i was like oh i could have watched i could have just watched yuda for like 10 minutes 
He was it's giving very such f- effective little boy misery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very funny to think about Blackpool Combat Club planning this and like Claudio and Mox made sure they had matching outfits. Like they brought in pack and then you just picture one, like Claudio being like, Oh, should we tell Yuta? And they're all like, nah, <laughs> just, like, <he's, laughs> don't worry about it. I think it, it kind of did make sense to me. I mean, not with Yuta as an adult, but like when, because I think of Yuta as their teenager, I'm like, that actually does track that you just be like, well, he will just have to deal with it when we deal with it, but he's only going to cause trouble ahead of time. He won't understand. He won't understand. We're going to have to make him understand. Right. Rough stuff. Um, It's a hard hard way to find out that your parents are getting divorced, you know, watching (laughs) one of them try to suffocate the other one in a plastic bag. But I was a little bit. That's life in Joe Biden's America. (laughs) (laughs) I was a little bit in, like, but, and you stayed with Brian Danielson. Like, he was like. Yeah, that's surprising. I guess the murder wasn't justified. I mean, if Mox, if Mox murdered like someone in front of me, I would a little bit be like, well, what did he do? You know, especially if Mox has been your parent, the one yeah. taking care of you all this time while Brian Danielson like fucked off doing whatever he wanted. No, I found it. I found it understandable kind of. Cause I was like, I bet like Brian Danielson has been doing his calms and stuff with Yuta and Mox is the one who's been out. He was at NJPW yeah. and he's he been did, he has doing his own thing and yeah. he's That's dedicated true. and he just got a new girlfriend and, you know, <laughs> and then he shows up and kills your dad. I'd be, I'd be upset. I'd be confused. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, this week on Dynamite. Oh, yeah. This week on Dynamite. Mox opened the show and I did miss it because I was dealing with some issues. Uh, but someone saw it. Leah? Yeah. No, I saw it. And he um, he did this little, like, this is why I'm mad at Brian Danielson. And it was just basically, like, Brian like made me some promises about who Blackpool Combat Club was going to be and what they stood for. And he didn't deliver on any of them. It was supposed to be about violence for the love of violence, but it's just been about egos. And, and we were building it. something. It was yeah. very like, we were we had a home together and you let me down. <laughs> you know? Well, I do think that Danielson said he wanted to have many children with Mox, but they right. only ever had the one. So That's true. That's it's basically the plot of uh, Fast Car, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Pretty much. <laughs> Um, and Mox and said, he, take your big car, take your fast car, take your fast car and keep on driving. <laughs> and Mox literally for real in this promo said blood alone moves the wheels of history, which, <laughs> all right, Dwight, Root, good, good loved him. it. It's, it's so, so funny. funny. I went down a rabbit hole about that where, cause I was like looking it up and it's a, it's like the original quotation is from like Mao or something. But it's it, like Mussolini. It's yeah. Mussolini, whatever. But like. Dwight paraphrased it in that specific way. So Mox didn't get it from anyone except Dwight because that's not the exact wording that's in the original. So it's like, you straight up are just quoting Dwight. You know, one time uh, I was in a work meeting. This was way back when we were in the office and we were brainstorming. I don't know. I think it was uh, like we were trying to figure out like how to teach people about like you know, giving a, like a speech, a good persuasive speech or something like that. And we, I was like, oh my God, it, this is making me think of the office bit with Dwight. Let's watch it now on the, we were in a conference room and I was like, let's watch it. And we turned it on and the volume was so loud (laughs) that someone came to knock on the door and be like, what's happening in here? Uh, And it was just like having too much fun, I'm afraid. Having Mm. too much fun. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, also on Dynamite, Mox uh, finally managed to get in touch with Darby. They had a little in-ring promo sesh together and Darby was kind of like, why do you keep telling me to call you? And Mox was like, well, one thing I want to say to you is you're great. You're just a little baby, though. You're just a little baby, and little babies can't have titles. So I don't think you need your title shot. I think I need your title shot. And they went back and forth about which of them should have the title shot, and they're going to fight for it at Grand Slam Dynamite. What would you guys think of the interaction? I think that people got mad about it, but actually it made perfect sense to me because Mox – 
Yeah, Mox manipulated Darby in the exact right way where like you said, he literally approached it being like, I, I don't think you I don't think you deserve this. I think you should you should have given it to me for space face keeping, uh safekeeping. And I think like any like if he tried that and anybody else, like the reaction would just be like, No, like it's mine. Yeah. But Darby was like, What do you mean? You said I don't think I earned it? I'll earn it. I'll earn it again. I don't give a shit, I'll earn it anyway. I'll fight ten of you. And it's just like why are you so easy? You're just so easy to bait. <laughs> you just got worked up for no reason. Like, yeah. I think the, uh, cause the other thing that let's actually, let's just explain this first, I guess I did put it here. Oh yeah. So after this, this segment where they set up this match for grand slam, uh, Nigel came out into the ring and he was like, I think he was just like, I've always hated Brian Danielson. And I was in that casino gauntlet at All In. And that was so fun. Wrestling is so fun. Anyway, I'd love to fight Brian Danielson. And I will do that at Grand Slam. And so then I think that we had a we had a little bit of, you know, a reaction of like, okay, well, if Brian Danielson is going to fight someone at Grand Slam, although there was a caveat in the match, like if he's cleared, then it doesn't make sense for Darby to be fighting mocks instead but i think it does make sense because i think the situation is that it's like basically it's like if you're in line to fight brian danielson stay in line and <laughs> mox was just on the other side of the line being like darby come over here hey darby come over here come, come over here that's and exactly darby, right that's yeah. exactly right Dar- Dar- <laughs> darby was in line for two straight hours he <laughs> waited that whole line he got to the front of the line he was literally standing in front of the door standing? they said the door is going to open any second and mox, <laughs> mox said, hey darby i got something cool over here come here and darby went okay <laughs> So Darby, I don't think you're brave enough to get out of line and come over. <laughs> what? Of course I'm brave enough. He comes running over. The way Mox said that, like, I, he said, like, I'm going to need that title shot, which was a real, like, like school bully. Like, so I'm going to need your lunch money. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to need like, that. Hand and Darby is like, I'm so small. Here it is. Oh, my God. Just really fucking funny shit. Yeah, I mean, to me, it made sense. I think it's like he got, Darby got out of line and signed a little contract with Mox. TK booked it. And then Nigel was like, okay, well, if no one's in line anymore, I would love to fight yeah. Ryan Danielson. <laughs> Nigel's energy during that promo was a little hysterical in this way where he was like, I didn't think I'd get this chance, but I'm going cool for it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Basically, yeah, he was I thought... watching on a monitor backstage and he was right. like, oh, shit, really? Okay, okay, out there. <laughs> Let me get out there real quick and just immediately go, dips, hey, dips, hey. It's very funny, too, because people are, like, also mad about the Nigel thing. And I actually hate Nigel personally, so I am not excited about it. But I can't deny that they have been building it for quite a while. Like, unfortunately, constantly. I mean, I didn't realize it was a build for all, because to be honest, I didn't know that Nigel was a wrestler for quite some time. So, but I knew he was, but everyone always said, like, He'll never wrestle again, or like you they know. made it sound like he wouldn't. He's to like me. 48. Retired. That's not that, that's not that old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, <guess for> a <laughs> I like whenever we see Nigel in person, I just don't connect him to the voice of Nigel, no. which I hate, even though they have the same voice. So it's like he came out for that promo, and my little happy vibe was like, Who's this? <laughs> never seen him before. <laughs> Can't wait to hear what he has to say. I'm always open to the thoughts of new men. For some reason, he strikes me as like, okay, Mr. Muscles, like a little try hard energy out here. I don't know why his muscles strike me that way more than other people's, but they do. I don't know. I don't, look, I'm not interested in this match. I don't care no. about this match, but it's fine. I think, you know, it's whatever. Well, unfortunately, it's like, I'm very interested in Mox Darby. They've already got me yeah. like on a hook and like, yeah. they haven't even been building it that long. And I'm like, Oh please never let this yeah. end. So if they have to find a rotating door of like useless men to fight Brian Danielson <laughs> yeah. while fine. Fine. Mox and Darby for. keep this going. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. I'm, yeah. I, it's I, like, I, again, I wouldn't have been mad about Brian Danielson versus swerve the whole summer. If they had been giving me like two other horny things all summer. Right, like, yeah. Yeah, this was this. I'm getting hangman stuff. I'm getting, you know, Mox sexually menacing people. Like, and that's all I need. Mox wearing that shirt. Oh my God. I have never seen his boobs have never looked juicier. Oh like, yeah. I actually was like, 
is this legal? You're too <laughs> sexy. This is a danger. Like, yeah. I guess I kind of turned into a conservative accidentally. Like, I was like, cover those up. You need to right. be wearing yeah. a bulky sweater. It's too like, much. Right. Modesty. Right. He wasn't even wearing a bra. Come on. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Nipples. Right. <laughs> Through the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> a very thin little white t-shirt oh there. Oh my God. It was crazy. They Clinging were. Clinging to those it, curves. It was like, it was no joke a rack. Like, you're like, oh, that's. Yeah. That's a wrap. Yes. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, Oof. like, basically a perfect rack. Like, oh, it yeah. was just, like, that's textbook, baby. Right. Yeah. Woof. I'm actually overheated. Um, the other thing about, uh, oh, the other thing, I know, like, many will not like to hear this. I'm sorry. It's just the situation with me. Um, I've just written Danielson's reign off. Like, I'm just, like, yeah. have... Have fun. I don't know. I don't really understand why this is happening. Uh, I mean, I do. I get, like, I get, I get the, you know, it's ROH and he's really, and Danielson is really special and he's a big deal. I get it. I get it. I get it. (laughs) But he gave me a really bad summer. And so mentally I was just like, okay, well, get the belt and then he can do what he wants. But I don't, I'm not going to pay that much attention to it. I don't really care. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) It's kind of, you know how, like, this is an insane analogy, but you know how people are like, freedom of speech. And it's like, okay, well, it's, it's, (laughs) Not like it's not against the law for me to ignore you when you say these things. Like I don't, I don't actually have to like pay attention. It's kind of like that thing where I'm like, yeah, he can have the belt. It's legal for him to have the belt. I'm not saying he mm. can't have the belt. I just don't have to like care. We like, don't have to have a reaction. You yeah. can't so make it, us react. And as long as I'm not going to care about the match, like he might as well have Nigel. Like sure. it's great. Yeah, it's actually better wanna... than him fighting someone that I would want to watch. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not wasting swerve on it. So it's like, sure. And and you know, there's a certain subset of ROH heads that are gonna pop huge. So it's like get them distracted hey. too. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't care. Right. Let him have it's fun. kind of like, okay, so I gave you like you know when you give a dog like a really like chewy bone, so you're like you can work on that. Yeah. Leave me alone while I do some other stuff. That's how I kind of feel yeah. about that match. Where I'm like, One of those maybe that will. Stick things, yeah, like I'm like, Tibetan you work stick. on that. Like you. Yeah. And you then maybe they'll the shut up about everything else in the show. Right. You work <laughs> right. on that. Or like when you give a toddler a really important kitchen job, like washing a <laughs> cucumber. <laughs> You're doing do such a good you, job, honey. Hey, this is real parenting tips with Allie night. <laughs> Hey, honey, when you wrote that Substack uh, entry with the 47 ROH references, you did such a good job. You, you did, did so good. good now, job. I think oh, you wow. should get another one out. The people are yeah. loving it. Now, you keep working on that. I'll Your be over here. Your blog spot is seeing hits. Yeah. <laughs> you keep working on that. Oh, I see you writing so industriously. <laughs> people are going to read that all the way to the end, for sure. <laughs> You better oh write God. more. I think ten to twenty thousand words will really, really get you there. I honestly Maybe. do not think a single one of our listeners has an ROH Substack, but if they are, we're not talking about you. You're <laughs> fine. So no, I, yeah, we're sorry. We don't know what any ROH Substacks are. <laughs> no, it's not our no. interest. So. And I was going to add, like, you could get us with this bit real easy. Like, just like, oh, girls, go back to writing your long <laughs> blog post about like <laughs> Dustin's favorite T-shirts. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, well. <laughs> every photo that I have of him and just categorize the t-shirts I'd love to <laughs> this is when we're like Darby's so easy to bait like I just felt myself like light up oh dusty t-shirts that would be great social suplex has a website don't they <laughs> if we just submitted an article that was like top 10 favorite Dustin t-shirts Jeremy surely Jeremy would let us put it up put it up yeah we have to it up. just put it up Jeremy oh no you don't have to read it just put it up Everyone's gonna no, worry. don't worry about it the contents no <laughs> Like Look, us I and Awfully Waffly are the only ones who click on it, but we're so happy. <laughs> we're so happy. I think it's a thing. I'm like, I think we're being pretty magnanimous. You know, it's like, it's for, for my mental health. I'm not paying attention to Brian Danielson anymore because I don't care because he's getting booked for the ROH heads. But I am happy that they're happy. I'm happy that they're happy. Now that he's not torturing me, I'm yeah. happy they're happy. As mm-hmm. long as it's not at the expense of my happiness, like, go crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. My happiness is the only thing that matters. So. Obviously. <laughs> okay, I think that's really good. Uh, Christian also still wants to fight Brian. We can't get into it, though. I think we've got to move the on. The line to fight Brian is quite long. <laughs> yeah. You want to get into it a little bit? A okay. little bit. Just just yeah. the fact that Luchasaurus and JB had that little stare at mm, Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. That interested that, me. That did. That interests me because I was like, yeah. if they're both healed, that's so fun. Yeah. Come on. I, Little I, team up. 
I'm with the people who said, let's get a Jurassic Express heel yeah. run. I think that yeah. would rock. I think Honestly, that would fucking rock. It would uh, be pretty helpful for the tag division, I think, yeah. too. So oh, we need it. Huge. It would be huge. Yeah. And also, like, I just really liked character-wise the way that they looked at each other and looked at each other. And, like, it didn't, it was wordless, but he still was, like, hey, like, I know we did a lot of fucked up shit, but, like, are you still mad? Because I'm a different person. You're a different person. Or can we just... <laughs> worse people. We're both, we're both pretty <laughs> bad now. Is that, can we put that behind us? And, like, the vibe was like, uh, yeah, absolutely. Shot. I could be there. You know, so, hey, mm. I'm into it. We like yeah. it. Uh, let's let's keep on the elite theme. Uh, the Young Bucks fought Claudio and Yuta at uh, All Out in a match that I really liked. And, uh, you know, it was very fun. that We hadn't built out a big story, but it was a really good match. They did a lot of uh, penis violence is mm. the term that we were using throughout our viewing experience. We said, oh, my God, more penis violence? <laughs> I really hope that both Bucks have had the children that they intend to have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kept thinking, like, do they always do they wear cups in wrestling? I'm sure do they sometimes- must. Not do you I mean, always wear it? Not always. I don't think MJF sometimes does. you can tell they're not. Yeah, no. It, but... MJF, you can see the ridges, but, but I if think... you're going to do that much penis violence, you'd put a yeah. little protective cup I on. Think, surely. I think surely, certainly, we're wearing cups. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really fun. Um, and uh, any other thoughts about about the match? I really did not have very many thoughts. It was just it was just a good fun match. No, it was good. It was good. Uh, I was hoping, I continue to hope that their gear will change. I Mm -hmm. also continue to hate that they don't match anymore, but I think it was a good match and I had fun. Yeah, that was very fair minded. Um, (laughs) You're welcome. Many of you say that. (laughs) Many of you are saying that. Uh, Then there was a tag team casino gauntlet on Dynamite this week for a shot against the Bucks at Grand Slam. the Bucks cut a promo ahead of time, so uh, unfortunately, Matt Jackson had put his hair back up. Yeah. Aww. You hate to see it, but he I was really wearing do. some new pearls, so... Love that. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Some yeah, black pearls. Some God gives some. with one hand, and he takes away with the other. <laughs> <laughs> God, God's listening to our podcast and is like, the girls need to cool down. Keep the vests on. <laughs> The young bucks kneel to do their nightly prayers every night. They say, God, should we take these vests off? And God is like, the girls are too damn randy. Just leave the vests on and just maybe placate them with with some accessories and stuff. But I don't think that you should be taking those vests off, no. I think they say, thank you, God. I think that the Lord is making a big mistake, though, because he's mm. putting me into a fever state that, like, the moment I think it's like gaping that like a button might go, I go into like some kind of hyperdrive where I'm you like just sit up really a Victorian yeah, I'm, ankle. Yeah. Right. I'm like tracking like with laser precision and I'm like, let the button go. Let the button go. <laughs> we're starting to get some like I-, I can't name them, but I think we're starting to get some like, you know, Kenny return teases from like Jack and from some gear stuff, I think. When Kenny comes back, everyone's gonna take their shirts off, right? Like it's like how could you it. let Kenny come home? And not celebrate by just like getting new. Yeah. How can their nips it. touch if they don't ta- take That's off? True. They their have pops. to touch. They have to do a three way nip touch. So mm-hmm. they're gonna mm-hmm. have to take their shirts you know, off. Their classic, their classic nip elite touch. Yep. nip touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might be saying like they fired Kenny. They are not aligned with Kenny right now. To which I say. I don't even give a shit. I'm sure they'll do their nip touch. <laughs> to celebrate I mean, Kenny coming back, I'm sure they'll do their nip touch. They'll, they always end up with Kenny again. So I am yeah. sort of like, yeah. surely that'll be the end of the EVP gimmick where like Kenny comes back and he's just like, hey, idiots, I'm also an EVP. Take off your shirts. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. I would hey, love. Hey, idiots, I'm also an EVP. Take your shirts off is like. <laughs> That's like the hey, intro we scene of a literally porno. swoon. We're like, that's what an EVP should do. I love that on a podcast where I'm constantly offering writing advice and talking about how I should run a wrestling company. I should be in charge of promos. What I offer in this situation is, hey, idiots. <laughs> I think it's right. I think it is what Kenny would say. I mean, and and we've I think- never claimed that gas station TV is good. I mean, <laughs> No, we just addictive. Good for us. <laughs> I would love to see. I really think that 
they could sell it, especially in a in the little BTE sketch. If Kenny did that, I think that the Bucks would both would kind of look at each other and look upset for a minute, and then meekly remove their shirts and just follow <laughs> Kenny and just be like, yeah. oh, "I like it when a like when when a man knows what he wants." <laughs> they really enjoy flanking a taller like single mm-hmm. star. Like, hey, yeah. like they, that's, that's they where they belong. Yeah. yeah. My gosh. Well, I can't wait to see it again one day. I, now they have their little they have their little baby. That's different for them. That's new. Oh, That's their grown. child. Yeah. They've never been their fathers child. before, but they are They're now. Really mm-hmm. fathers. Did you so see that nice. Did you see a Twitter bio today where Matt was getting kind of like snarky about how they aren't twins? And I was like, shut up, you are. You love <laughs> to be called twins. <laughs> it's your favorite thing. Don't pretend. Come on. Um Oh, okay. So anyway, they were like, it sucks that the tag division sucks and we're the only good people here. That's true. Uh, They came out to watch the gauntlet live. So they had chairs uh, at the top of the ramp and lots of men came out. I was actually kind of astonished by the number of men that came out. But one aspect of this match was that the (laughs) IWC had gotten like really worked up and been like new men will debut in this match why would you have a tag team casino gauntlet if new men weren't going to debut so then we all spent all day speculating about which new men would debut and whether it'd be it was, the new men we expected or new men we didn't and and the vibe was very much like everyone was saying it's it is going to be either motor city machine guns or it's going to be the hurt business it, mm-hmm. it's going to be yeah. one of them and we don't know which one and in retrospect i am like well like srs usually has like some kind of like blah, 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 was seen backstage kind of crap. Yeah. But, like, there was nothing. But, like, it didn't stop anybody. Everyone was like, it is happening. Yeah. They really, you know, and we got caught up in it. We got caught up in it. We have to stop paying attention to our community, to anything our community says. We <laughs> say things. We have to block them out and just say, like, no. Not Your yet. words can't touch us. Uh, because then I was watching the whole match, like, I can't wait to see some new men. And... This any time, well, they were all men we knew. Men we knew would come out, and I would go, oh, "Okay, get, get in the ring, get in the ring." I'm like, "Why well, keep watching the tunnels for some new men?" Um, what did you guys think of the match? It, it was, was totally fine. Totally fine. It's hard to know how much of it was bad. Not bad. It wasn't bad. It was fine. But it was like, I didn't enjoy it as thoroughly as I could have because of what you've just described. Um, And then it ended and it was like, oh, where were the new men? There's no new (laughs) men. No new men. (laughs) No new men. Same men I always see. Oh, okay. It It did feel like it was building somewhere, you know, and it didn't build anywhere and it was just like, oh, it's over now. It's like, oh. And then like Will Ospreay won. So it's like, oh. Yeah. And so what had happened with that was that I guess Don Callis and the Callis family approached Osprey and Don Callis was like, well, Osprey, you've never lost a casino gauntlet. So I would really appreciate it if you would partner up with Kyle and you guys can be in the tag team casino gauntlet and and you have all your history. Yeah. And he called in the favor. He cashed in his favor. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's so, not hanging over Osprey anymore. I thought it was, that was going to Which is out. interesting. I did think that would come out in a weirder way. Especially because I do think that, like, if Kyle had asked first, I think Osprey would have just uh, said yeah. yes because he likes Kyle. <laughs> Although Osprey did do some funny acting where he was like, I don't think I can be doing that. I've got so much to be getting on with. I have this title I have to defend. I'm just really busy. I'm flying a lot. Like, I don't know about that. <laughs> but then he he agreed to do it and that they won the match. Um, oh, what can we say about this? Uh, before we talk about the Osprey Fletcher win, I want to talk about, I think there was a missed opportunity, okay? If the Young Bucks are sitting in chairs at the top of the ramp watching the whole match live and we did see some of their reactions as teams were coming out and they were very funny i was like i gotta have a live slug cam or something i gotta uh-huh. be getting i gotta be getting more of their reactions i've got to be hearing them on commentary yeah. i guess matt was trying to get a. he was doing a bit where he was trying to get a thing and they wouldn't give it to him yeah yeah i i definitely agree with that Like, I've never, I don't think any, either of them have ever been on commentary. And I frankly would kill to have Nick on commentary for a solid match because I don't know what insane shit he would say. But yeah, they really missed an opportunity to just have like a little picture in picture window of them like 
theatric. Like, don't you think Matt would be in the like absolute oh like, ham city, baby? Ham city. If he got, if he just had to keep theatrically being like, oh, ooh, <laughs> that was hurt. <laughs> The other idea that I had, and I can't, I actually didn't go to check to confirm that they didn't do this, but I was like, well, if they're just up there, they should be filming some TikTok trends while nobody, like, just in front of the live audience being like, (laughs) who cares about this? We're just doing our TikTok trends, and then I should see them on their TikTok. And that was my other idea that I don't think happened. So No, that'd be delightful, though. I would have killed so much to have like some very cool match like uh, move be happening into the ring, and then you cut to the ramp and like Matt is like in the middle of a TikTok yeah, dance. A dance. <laughs> She's so funny. Uh, anyway, so they're gonna fight um, Osprey and Fletcher at uh, Grand Slam. What do you guys think about the match? It, I That's hear people fine. keep speculating that this is the way that they will bring me. Um, Mark, Mark Davis back and to that I, like I say I welcome that I like <laughs> yeah. if we are Show bringing the, the tag team back to its former prominence I think that ass can really assist with that uh, <laughs> ass assist, assist. <laughs> <laughs> I agree I'd love to see that butt back in action I'd love to see him love to see Mark Davis it's been a really long time yep yeah that would be very fun. And I do feel like they're a uh, tag team where it's like, you don't know who's going to win like fully, which is good. Whereas if like the righteous had won, you'd just be like, okay, so the bucks are winning. Right. You know? like, so there, it's like, that's fine. There is no other person in that gauntlet that I think the bucks, cause was grizzled young vets in it. Mm-mm. I don't think mm. so. No, I think they were, they were, oh, they were. I think. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe they are possibly the only ones that, potentially the bucks could like have had some question everybody else in that match it's like the bucks have beat that everybody has beat each other so many times that it's like yeah like of course like it's like i don't always love it when like you just put together a tag team and then have like the tag team instantly win but in these circumstances like it made sense. It wasn't the first time that they'd tagged together. Yeah. And, like, they do have a history. And, like, they're what, there's not, like, a ton of options. To me, sometimes I'm like, you can criticize AEW for doing something when there are better options. But here I sort of was like, yeah, they didn't have a lot of great options. And this is fine. Yeah. yeah. I have to say I agree. And uh, I want more than anybody. I would like to see the Bucks in a legit feud legit storyline where they are you know we're seeing stuff happen more Mm -hmm. often than we've been seeing it but um given what's going on in the circumstances and the fact that I can't get fucking worked up about the booking for Grand Slam I'm afraid because (laughs) I just had to get worked up about the booking for two pay-per-views in a row so it's like I'm (laughs) packed Baby, yeah, you right. uh, you can maybe get me to get worked up about the booking for Wrestle Dream. That's my next check in. Okay, that's yeah. the next thing you can possibly get me to care about in a really mm-hmm. serious way about like, well, they're gonna have to really get the booking right for this. Not not for Grand Slam. Not for, for me, baby. Free television? No, Please. no. And I sort of am like, if they do what I want them to do for Grand Slam, which is you know develop a story and like have yeah. these feuds get set up. Then there's got to be a couple of weeks where they're doing that. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, <laughs> you yeah. can't, like, I'm sorry. If, we got no time. Like, you can't, like, just invent things and have them. I mean, it works everyone that once in a while, but, like, you got to give them, you got to give them a little chance to cook, as they say. Give them a chance yeah. to cook. You say, I want a, I want a full roast dinner. Get back to me in an hour. Baby, we don't have the time. No, we need it. <laughs> we need, the, the oven is still preheating. I've been still yeah. preheating. And they clearly are trying to rebuild the tag division. Like, I did feel like they were indicating that they're putting some focus on it. So, like, yeah, please, I God. This, this crowd was pissing me off with the what chants, but I <sighs> could have kissed them on their mouth when they started chanting tag team wrestling because I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. Tony, you hear that? There's mm-hmm. an appetite. Listen to that, but not the other things they've been chanting the all night. Uh, the other thing that I will say, and this is just like, it's just you know, it's just selfish preference. I'm like, I think I will have a really nice time watching the Bucks wrestle Osprey and Fletcher. Yeah. I unfortunately think I will have an absolute blast and uh, I will like it. So 
you know, it is what it is. Hey, I, I, when the Bucks wrestle people that like really, like really get into it and are really collaborative wrestlers, like, of course I'm going to fucking have the time of my fucking life. Like if I can't have the Lucha Brothers anymore, then yeah, like I'm looking oh for, God. looking for partners who can meet their freak, you know? He's taken all our men. He's stolen our men. <laughs> He's stolen our best men and he won't buy new men for us. <laughs> he won't get us new men. He takes our best men. Okay. Um, let's move on, uh, and do a, just a, actually, do we have anything we want to say? Pack and Osprey had their match, and this was really, like, a very special match for Dave Meltzer. <laughs> like, I agree that this match, like, really, really fucked and was, like, so fun to watch, but for me, it, like, fucked in that way that's like, ooh, I just ate the best brownie of my life, but now I'm not eating it anymore, but I think it was a little different <laughs> for, for Dave. He'll be well, thinking about it. <laughs> this was one of those matches that led to the creation of Special Little Guy. I mean, like, we've yeah, let no. it, like, people have taken it and, like, made They've it more it pejoratively us. than I think we meant it. But, like, yeah. this is that moment where I'm like, yeah, anything that uh, Dave Meltzer said about this match <laughs> was absolutely tainted <laughs> yeah. by the fact that his brain is insane. Like, when he thinks about Osprey, he goes wild and he can't think right. That's mm-hmm. okay. Right. We right. can write a sub stack about Dustin's t shirts. Like, we're yeah. not, our hands yeah. are not blameless. Clean, we're not blameless. But it's like, yeah. Osprey, I mean, um, Meltzer, please admit that you could write a Substack about <laughs> Osprey's t-shirts. Like he can, you he'll say clear. he'll say things about this match where he's just like, oh, and in homes across the U.S., when people saw this match, they stood up and cheered. I'm hearing <laughs> stories every day. They stood up and cheered. They were crying. People were crying. Yeah, and it's just like, well, that's not true. <laughs> like it was an amazing match. It was, it was so fun to watch. Right. It was it crazy. Was, yeah. It was a thing, like, Didn't with cry. Seinfeld's finale, when, like, the ambulances <laughs> that had Frank Sinatra in the back could get through the streets of Las Vegas because everyone was home watching Seinfeld. It's that. <laughs> it's like, all of the ambulances everywhere because everyone is home. People were it was, dying because they couldn't get to the hospital because of Will Ospreay. It He's was so funny watching Dave, looking at Dave's, like, star ratings for the pay-per-view because it was, like, Osprey and Pac were, it was, like, a full point higher than every other match, which was so funny because after the pay-per-view, like, I fully forgot. Like, when I think of the pay-per-view now, it's, like, I don't even remember that Pac and Osprey fought, even though, like, it was, like, such a fun match. Like, it was great, but... It was oh, absolutely Dave. crazy Adorable. to behold, but then it's, like, there was nothing... There was nothing that is the thing that we would remember. Like, we would remember yeah. the narrative aspects because the moves are ephemeral to us. We see yeah. them, we mm-hmm. marvel, and then we forget them and <laughs> right. have to put them, have to get the quotes from someone else to put them in the schedule to be like, he did a brain buster. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was really fun. Um, oh, and then, so this is, now we're in the flippy, the flippy zone. So Ricochet was watching this match backstage, and then Ricochet fought Sammy Guevara on Dynamite, and that match was pretty cool, too, honestly, yeah. from a flippy Crazy perspective. Crazy flips. They have did I some really, amazing flips. Have we all kind of reset on Sammy Guevara? Because I was kind of like, nah, he might as well be here. Hey. He, uh, he got, he got me a little, <laughs> he got me a little stack. I mean... Well, you've, you've never, Sammy, you could always say he'll, he'll do the flips, you know? Like. Yeah. I think that I used to feel so aggravated by him and like really be like, why won't you just do a little character work? A little character work could take you so far. But now I'm older, I'm wiser, and I've accepted that he doesn't want to. And so when I see him, I just think, Oh, Sammy, you're an AW original, so you are my you're my brother. Yeah. You're my annoying younger brother, and I think it's fun that you're experimenting with this little hairstyle that's so silly. <laughs> and it's, that's fun, and you're having this match, and you're doing your usual thing of just like you're really confident, and it's not character work, but you can be here. You're allowed to be here. <laughs> He's kind of slipped down the card too, so it's yeah, less, true. It's fine. less yeah. yeah. Don't you feel a little bit though, like Sammy was outside our three person CEO. Um, sweet and was like okay they wanted me to do character work and I know it got it this time when they see my hairstyle they're gonna be like I mean that he's getting you, closer yeah he's, he he's like closer. they wanted me to grow and change and I grew this hair and I put it and I changed it, and it changed, they're gonna fucking yeah. love it they're gonna oh love it. it and it's a thing where it's like um it's like we're it's like we're English teachers kind of I mean we're CEOs but it's like we're English teachers <laughs> and 
he, he came into class being like, I did such a good report on the red badge of courage. And we can like see that it's like one page double spaced. We're kind of like, <laughs> oh my God. But he's so excited. He really loved the red badge of courage. And we, and it's not totally appropriate. We look at our best students, Swerve and Hangman, and they're looking at us like, oh my God, pathetic. And we give him a little <laughs> look like, it is a little pathetic. And then we say, that's so good, Sammy. I'm really glad that you love this book. That's wonderful. Let's keep that enthusiasm up for the rest of the semester. <laughs> it's like he used to be the worst student, but somehow like he now is like safely in the middle of the pack where it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. Not mad at him. I'm never going to like praise him. He's, he's lucky that I like every once in a while I'm like, oh yeah. And he was there. And he was there. Yeah. I think that's right. I think that's a good place for us to be with Sammy. Um, he lost the match. Ricochet won. And then Ricochet got attacked by the Beast Mortos. And then um, afterwards online, we got our special. We got our special little guy because we had a little. Ricochet was doing a little interview about coming to AEW. And then the conglomeration walked by and they said hi. And OC was there and he said hi. And then a moment later, our beautiful son, Chuck Taylor, walked by. And then he hugged Ricochet. He had got such a sweet hug with Ricochet because he trained. <laughs> Him and they've known each other forever from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed with this because Dustin like was this. doing his like ironic, like d- semi detached thing, yeah. except that he was smiling so much that so it sweet. wasn't really selling it. And Ricochet wasn't even trying. Ricochet was looking mm-hmm. at him and he was like, so I work with my friend now. I work with my friend Dustin. And I was like, I really, I said this to somebody else, but I was like, I just wanted to grab him by the shoulders and shake him and be like, you are loved. People love you. <laughs> Can't you see how beautiful Can't God see. made you? <laughs> Did I teach you shame? <laughs> anyway, uh, we liked this, and um, I liked the kayfabe implications that... So the conglomeration walked by, and then Chuck Taylor walked by right behind them, and I was like, that's so interesting. We've seen so many... Uh, backstage segments where OC is like on the verge of tears. And as we have later in the schedule, though, I don't fucking know what's happening with the timing here. Uh, OC, like OC has really has been acting like my friend Dustin is dead. I don't (laughs) see him anymore. And I was like, Oh, you guys are hanging out still backstage. It's like (laughs) that he can't wrestle is the big thing, but it's very funny to imagine Chuck Taylor, just like just off camera for a lot of these segments being like, I'm right here. I'm actually right like, here. We <laughs> just had lunch together. <laughs> I live, bitch. Was it, was it someone in our Discord channel? Someone was like, what if it's the problem is that he doesn't recognize Dustin in his new AEW shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good one. Very funny. Um, also, Dustin looks so funny in that shirt because why is it so baggy? <laughs> he, None of it is. He's got a real talent. Like, it's amazing how bad he can make, like, all clothes look, you know? It's like, <laughs> why did you get the wrong size, buddy? It's just a black polo shirt. It should be the, all right. The picture of him and Ricochet together with Ricochet all, like, dressed up in a suit and then Dustin in his, like, producer gear or whatever was just a phenomenal because I was like, <laughs> wow, such different problems. And yet the menswear guy would crucify both of you. You <laughs> both do not, you are not dressed correctly, but I celebrate your friendship. And that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. So true. I'm obsessed. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, Willow and Chris, uh, who had their big street fight at All Out, and they had to follow uh pack an osprey which at the time i think felt really s- stressful yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah well it was like i think dave uh melter had tweeted like god bless who has ever has to follow this and like willow and chris were like don't worry we got it yeah and it was like oh of course they're gonna put the women after this but then this match slapped it was so good i literally was, was like pack an osprey who yeah, well, I think it was really smart to actually like to say like, OK, well, they have a super like this is going to be like really fucking like violent, super emotional, mm-hmm. like lots of prop stuff. Uh, it'll have the intensity that it pack Osprey did not have. Like they're just mm-hmm. doing normal man fighting. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. abnormal because it was crazy because. Like, they are insane. But mm-hmm. um, I, th- I think it actually was set up really well where it was, like, it immediately stimulated a different part of the brain right. and then was mm-hmm. such a good match 
in its own right that it was just like, oh, fuck, yeah. Okay, I forgot that other thing that was happening. I'm in this. Right. Yeah. The women's division has gotten so good because this really, like, I was excited for this match, but it, like, fully exceeded my expectations. Like, yeah. they went nuts yeah. with the... And they blew yeah. their other matches out of the water. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Insanely. Uh, yeah, we've seen them so many times, but it was still, like, oh. And I think, was like, insane. the other ones, I was kind of like, well, Chris needed the win. Why did Willow win this? Chris should have won it. And now I'm sort of like, well, this is a lesson to me because I'm glad she didn't and then won this one because I think it was, mm. like, this one meant yeah. so much more because it's like, yeah, she won this because she's fucking out of her mind. Yeah. I It just was insane. They They had every prop that you can think of. I was somehow astonished when they actually got to use light tubes. Like I was like, mm, oh fuck. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. we were doing that anymore. That rocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. I mean they just used everything. They went all out. Uh yeah. one... and they got a little genital violence themselves right on the <laughs> thumbtacks. <laughs> which I don't think the men truly appreciated the way they should have, but I was uh, oh. men, men are not fans of vagina dentata, but they should be. <laughs> <laughs> You think there were teeth in there, Leah? You think there were some teeth in there? <laughs> the tax served as teeth. <laughs> the tax were the teeth. So true. Uh, I'll, I also was just like, a st- I was like, oh my God, you just did the splits? You mm. just straight up did the splits? She's crazy. I mean. Wild. These women are so good. My one complaint is that they neither of them was wearing stretchy jeans. I know. That was yeah. like a hallmark of the street fight match, and I had to readjust. I'm like, okay, they're, I guess. I guess we're not doing. I guess we're not doing stretchy jeans <laughs> I guess anymore. We're doing stretchy jeans, all right. <laughs> as Somehow. soon as I learn something, you take it away from me. But sure. sure. <laughs> Somehow I got horned up, anyways. Though, don't worry. <laughs> it's so funny to imagine us just out in the world. I think we did it on our podcast with people being like, "What's a street fight?" And we're like, "Oh, that's why they wear their stretchy jeans." <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we think is the truth. Yeah, We're just yeah. Like, yeah that's just people the are like, they wear oh, their jeans. actually, the hallmark is this other thing that we've never noticed. We only <laughs> notice that people wear jeans to a street fight. There probably is, you know. Feel free to tell us what a street fight actually is. Uh, I doubt we'll internalize it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, really, really good. Uh, I don't think we saw either of them. This week after that? A lot of people are missing from Dynamite this week, to be honest. I assume they're healing up. Willow is going to Mexico, I believe. Yes. Oh, she's, right. she's in that she crew. She's in Mexico. Yeah. The Mexico she is, crew. I think she has yeah. a belt. She has the belt. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. so true. Uh, it was a real, like, there were a lot of murders. And yeah, there were a lot of people we didn't see because they were murdered. They got murdered. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. hard. That's so hard. Um, okay, let's just quickly check in on uh, the old, what I've now called the Continental Conglomeration. <laughs> uh, so Okada had his Continental Congress at All Out, and it was kind of the, was kind of the bathroom break match, right? <laughs> yeah. it, it was, was a little bit. I, mean, I think I was, actually yeah. took mine for Mercedes Sheeta, actually, but uh, that was more of a timing thing than a... Yes, yeah. Well, yeah. we were all welcome to go pee when we need to, but uh, this was a little bit... Because this... This was a little one of these things is not like the others because yeah. there wasn't a super intense vibe to it. It was just like, yeah, this will be a fun match for four <laughs> men to have together. And I think it was. It was. Yeah. It, it, they it was like a, were asleep in class things. when people were like, so this is the murder pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they got there and they were like, oh, should we have murdered someone? Like, oh, my bad. <laughs> Didn't realize that's what we were doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, like, I think this one was just like, oh, you knew how it was going to end, and there wasn't really any stakes, and all those people were just like, oh, we're just happy to be here. So it was like, I needed to come down from all of the heights of horniness that I had hit, so I was like, yeah, this is the match where I'm, like, going to go make myself some ice cream. It's so important to have little cool-down matches. I mean, just... I I feel like people don't appreciate that enough. Like, it Mm -hmm. actually is a... I understand that you guys like like to be mean and be like, oh, it, Jericho has a match. I guess that's when I'll use the bathroom. And it's like, yeah, feel free. So you have to use the bathroom <laughs> sometimes. Someone has to have the match that you go to the bathroom during. I don't, you know, I don't like, have to tell you. Do you remember when we were at All Out, uh, whatever that was, 21? 21, 21 when, yeah. where When Big Show had his match, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. sigh of relief in the stadium mm-hmm. where everyone was <laughs> like, oh, God, I needed a new drink. I needed to pee. Yeah. Like, thank you so and much. Th- they honestly didn't let that match go on. It didn't on go long, long enough. enough. I was about to say yeah. the same thing. I missed the beginning of the cage mm-hmm. match. 
because yeah. I was so busy peeing, thinking that I had time, but I guess <laughs> I didn't realize that Mr. Big Show Big Man was just going to stomp his opponents in two seconds. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> just draw it out a little bit for those of us who had to wait in line in the women's bathroom. I guess men don't yeah. get it. Because it was so crowded in the bathroom break match, because that one was the most clear bathroom break match I've it really was. ever seen on a card. Yeah. yeah. Um, now what are we talking about here? Oh, so then, um, then this week on Dynamite, uh, we had a little Okada promo. He had a face-off with Takeshita. I can't produce the reasons for that, but I know that they're building a little tension there. Well, I mean, Takeshita was in the, the four-way, right? Yeah, yeah and isn't there this. a thing kind of going on where, like, Takesha's starting to feel neglected in the DCF, and, like, mm-hmm. she he did a little face down with Osprey, too, and now he's he kind of facing okay, he down did. I was worried I Okada. made that up. Takesha yeah, so. is, like, showing more personality on camera, which is nice, because yeah. sometimes he's just kind of, like, standing behind Don Callis not doing anything, and I know everyone's always like, Takesha needs a bigger push, but I'm kind of like, he's not really making use of his opportunities, right. though, but so it's nice to see him, like, he's ramping trying up, a little like, bit. Yeah, the disgruntlement. Do you remember, I mean, bef- this before it all crashed and burned, when Wardlow started, like, he used to just stand yes. silently before an MJF, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden we're like, I don't think Wardlow's real happy. I think something's mm-hmm. happening with Wardlow. Feels a little bit like we're in that stage where, like, yeah. Takesh yeah. just starting to be disgruntled, and there's something possibly coming, so. Wardlow did a really good job with that. Why he did, did he just yeah. then forget that he'd ever done <laughs> that nice background face acting that builds a little story yeah Do you i liked he, it he gave an interview during that time where he was like my job right now is like standing behind mjf and being a bodyguard but to be clear i can talk and i was like wow i hope you get it a chance someday and then it's like it happened and it was like oh you talk. can't you big liar <laughs> yeah, you lied to us we're always getting lied to, and it, we're easy marks because we don't <laughs> fucking know anything. Okay, uh, we also got a backstage promo from Jericho, uh, once again accusing Orange Cassidy of owing him $7,000 for the jacket that he ruined in the Mimosa Mayhem match uh, years ago. And he explained that he stole OC's backpack and found something very interesting inside, which immediately, I'm going to say, turned me on. I was like, <laughs> oh, you stole his private property and peeped through it and found something interesting? Mm-hmm. Yes, please. <laughs> this was, and the, I think this was the moment this week where we were most isolated from the discourse, where people were like, ugh, yeah. not Jericho and OC again. We did that, and it sucked the first time. And we were like... This me- this feud is the reason we're into wrestling, and we could not it be is. happier to have it come back. <laughs> oh my God. There's nothing like people remembering things that happened four years ago to yeah. really get to me, too. We like that. We're like, yeah. oh, all of it. I think it makes sense for Jericho's character, too, honestly, that it's like four yeah. years later, suddenly he's like, I'd love to have $7,000, and I think you owe it to me. <laughs> I know. Oh, and the people- funny thing is someone was pointing out that I, at the time, like... Um, that they had a stipulation match where Jericho was like, you have to pay me the $7,000 you owe me if if you lose this match. And then OC won it, so he shouldn't owe him the $7,000 anymore, <laughs> which is funny. OC should have brought that up but because mm. it's in character for Jericho to be ignoring it. It sure is. Yeah. It's in character for and Jericho. kind of o- in character for OC to forget, too. Right, yeah. because <laughs> Dustin was the brains of that operation, mm-hmm. and Dustin's dead. And OC doesn't know that Dustin's alive anymore. Yeah. Chuck Taylor mm. is just off screen in this being like, dude, you won the stipulation match and OC is just being like, I wish Chuck were here. I can still see, I can still hear his voice. He'd tell me what to do. <laughs> Dustin's just like, what? I don't know. Whatever. I guess feud with him. I guess feud with him with your new friends. Um, Sorry, what were you saying, Leah? I think I interrupted oh, you. Yeah. Oh, well, this was, a, this was, it related to something else someone said, but just that, they did actually, I thought that they did a good job of sidling into it because OC beat Brian Keith in like some match and I think on collision. And that's why Jericho started this up because he was like, you humiliated Brian and you hurt my coat. And I feel like people are not giving him credit for that. I don't know why I said hurt my coat. That was like a good insane hurt way. My, you hurt my beautiful coat. <laughs> you hurt my coat. <laughs> oh my God. 
Uh, anyway, Jericho, uh, the Learning Tree had a trios match that they won, and then in ring, Jericho revealed that what he found in O.C.'s backpack was a picture of O.C. and best friends. Mm-hmm. And because he's really sad because he missed his friends. And then Jericho said... Um, what did he say here? He, said, he was basically like, you care about friendship and that's why you're weak. Pay me yeah. my money. So forget about your friendships and pay me my money. I want my cash, Orange Cassidy. You're going to give me that cash. <laughs> and then backstage, OC, we cut to a video of OC that Jericho can see. And he says, my boys are bringing you the rest of your cash. And they had a big bulldozer. And the bulldozer it was the thing of the bulldozer, the, the bin. The, the scoop of the bulldozer <laughs> was absolutely full of coins that he poured mm. all over, quote unquote, Jericho's brand new Bentley, which I had a very funny reaction to reading because I was just like, oh, men love knowing cars. <laughs> and then I was like, well, they said it on the program. And I was like, I don't care. Stop telling me what kind of car it is. <laughs> oh, man, this week on my business trip, I was standing at the rental car desk and the woman in front of me, they were like, oh, we have a Kia for you, but do you want a Mustang? And they were like, it's a free upgrade. Like, we've just got one here. And the woman was like, oh, maybe. But then she turned it down because she was like, I'm on a work trip and I don't want to, like, drive up in a fancy car. And the woman was like, oh, it's cool. You know, we just offered to everyone. And I was next in line. So I was like, ooh, that, that's my Mustang. You wanted the Mustang. And then she didn't offer it to me. <gasps> what the hell? Oh, my God. Did you ask for it? No, she had, like, already made up my little packet, so it was just, like, pre-assigned, and I was ready to go, so I was just, and I don't care that much about Mustangs, but I I did feel a little slighted right in front of me. Yeah, I wish you'd done that that Mustang. If she said we offered to everybody and then didn't offer to you, (laughs) I know. Not to this bitch, though. (laughs) Yeah, we don't need that, no. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Um, Really, listen, I thought it was funny. I, I thought it was. I thought it was funny. I liked when he. It they was poured funny. The co- it wasn't. I, mean, I looked at it and I said, "Doesn't seem like enough coins <laughs> and like a coin? It's not the worst thing in the world for a coin to be on your car." And Jericho was like on his knees, like sobbing, like my beautiful car. I know. And it didn't even look like it scratched it, honestly, which just made the segment more enjoyable to me. Because yes, like fun. I love a little AEW thing that doesn't quite come off, you know? It's right. Delightful. Now, the hammier it gets, the stupider it gets, the happier I am. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to be honest, I I uh, had an initial reaction of like, oh, you can clean that up easy. But then I started thinking about it, and I was like, I'd actually would not enjoy cleaning those <laughs> coins. No, I would be a really long process, and I'd be trying to dig around in all the parts of my car that is brand new. You shouldn't be digging around in them. You no, it's like in the door it. handle, it's oh. under the seat, it's in crevices. They can get into crevices where it's like your car's little brake might not work anymore because yeah. there's a, a nasty coin in there. And you're going to be really finding dangerous. coins for the next five years in I that just, car. I pictured Jericho making <laughs> Big Bill like crawl around the Bentley fishing <laughs> coins. And he's and so got, tall, it's really He's so tall, it's, he's yeah. folding himself into different contortions <laughs> trying to reach all the coins. That's happy. That brings me happiness. Oh, my God. He's basically just stuck oh. in the tree with his butt hanging <laughs> in the window. Oh, my God. You're right. All over again. He's in there for so long that Jericho does hang a little picture on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I, le- I personally liked it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was fine. I wasn't mad about it, I'm afraid. I didn't I wasn't mad. There were a lot of things this week that like other people were mad about that I did not even notice or didn't occur to me that enjoyed. I was allowed to be mad to be honest <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna fight actually I don't truly understand what's going on though because so OC and Jericho are gonna fight on Dynamite this week not Grand Slam not Grand Slam not Grand Slam and they're both going to Mexico for the CMLL uh pay-per-view I assume and I was like I wonder if that has something to do with it like I wonder if that's why they're mixing it up because they're both going to Mexico and something's going to happen in Mexico, which would make sense to me. But if it's not for Grand Slam, then I don't like fully understand. Like, I don't know why it's happening, but I don't think it's going to be happening for that long. So, (laughs) yeah, seems fine. It's fine. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as long as it was the first time. I think it's probably just fine. Yeah. 
I, prove us wrong, you know? Ch- yeah. We'll be back mm. here December 1st being like, oh my God, if this Jericho OC feud doesn't end soon. I mean, honestly, like, if they went till December, I don't even know if I'd be that mad about that, you know? Like, it's like, whatever. <laughs> okay, double down. Okay. <laughs> Anne said, I can take it. I can. I'll see Jericho. I'll enjoy it. Thank you. I think yeah, they, no, you know. I mean, I, like, a couple, if they did a couple fun tag matches with, like, Kyle O'Reilly and Big mm. Bill. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my I'd God. Like but that. You know what would make me a little sad, though? It would be really sad to have OC Jericho feud where there's no little bit of the bubbly and no one is mm. popping champagne all over <laughs> OC. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, that was a real formative moment for us, I'll be when honest. We, when we saw that and we're like, is this what wrestling <laughs> is? Our eyes bugged you're out of our heads. So you're saying at us still here four years later. Yeah. We were like, so you're saying the small blonde man is in the center <laughs> of a ring of other men who are spraying white foam onto his face. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and we and then we four years later, we we were still here. <laughs> waiting for those heights to be reached again. No one has ever no one has ever sprayed that foam again. But when we are pumping cars on <laughs> gas station TV, you better when we're believe. doing our our pumps for us. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's real Friday night here, girls. Oh my um, god, is that what our is that what our gas station is called? Our pumps for us. <laughs> our pumps for us. <laughs> our pumps for us. The most popular gas station in America, where. Every pump place told me to do it. Twenty four seven. People are like, "Why are there so many cars at that gas station?" They're like, "You will not believe what's on the TVs in there." Like all of today's it's, wrestling stars are doing the world's stupidest matches, and it's the only place you could see them. <laughs> you got to line up. Just in the, we just pay them it. so well that they only have to take indie. Uh, dates if they want to and a lot of them don't so there's like yeah mm. the only way you're seeing some of these people is if you uh you fill her up like our gas station dave Meltzer, what is it like, again? lives at our, our gas station now because we because we employ will osprey so dave Meltzer just has a little bunk in the in the back of the gas station <laughs> he just stands out there he's got because it's the only place you can see will osprey oh my god do you think that um I know we can't with our real kids. Can we pay the men to do a commercial for told me to do it in the style <laughs> of um, when the male models in Zoolander have their orange book of frappuccinos <laughs> and they're at the gas station and they do blow Classic up, their, gasoline blow up plate, the car, yeah. but, um, to, but to w- wake me up. Oh my God. Yeah. But they have the little bit of the bubbly. Mm. Oh my God. Perfect. Wow. There we go. Love they it. have a bubbly Maybe fight. <laughs> That's perfect. So book it, book it. Let's throw a couple million at that. (laughs) Okay. Uh, And then uh, the last thing I have here is that Mariah was supposed to have her belt celebration at All Out, but then she didn't because she was like Chicago sucks ass, and so she berated the crowd a little, which they deserved. Mm -hmm. And then um, she fought Queen Amanada on Dynamite, and she won, and she got a microphone afterwards, and she said she can't have her celebration because she's missing something or someone. Mina, please, please come back to her, Mina. And then she just lay there in the ring kind of writhing, doing a, like, a mass, uh, what am I trying to say? Whatever. Anyway, she was doing kind of a thing. And um, Mina, I agree. Come yeah. back to us. I mean, please, she's been, Mina. she's she's here. With she's somewhere. here. She's here uh, somewhere. somewhere. I would give anything for Mina to become all elite. Please. Yeah. I need to see them writhing together in the ring. Yes. I really want to have multiple people writhing. Yeah, I need to see When them. you can. I need to see the brother. But mm-hmm. also, I'd mm-hmm. like to see them arguing. I'd like to see them fighting yeah. together. Then I'd like to see them fighting each other. I'd like mm-hmm. to see... I'd like to see them interacting, and then one of them starts walking off screen, and you see a little look from the other... And you don't really know what's going on, but you know that it's going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. And wow. I, know, I know Mariah wants to give it to me is the thing. I'm like... Yeah. And now, now I know how safe it can be in her hands. I'm like, Tony, <laughs> you better let Mariah do what she wants to do. 
It is mm-hmm. true. We're like, she's holding us, and we're just like limp little kittens. Yeah. And we say, okay, take us anywhere. Mm-hmm. We know we'll like it. It'll be somewhere warm. Mm. So true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> That's the final topic, girls. Was there anything that you wanted to discuss that we didn't discuss? It's very strange to be in a place where I'm medium happy with AEW right now, and yet I seem to be in the extreme minority. I know. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. We were yeah. we were happier than many this week from a lot of different. From a lot of different, like, subgroups of the IWC, yeah. a lot of people were not happy, and we were pretty happy, and I don't know, I guess, like, maybe it's like, it's like you just made me get so worked up about these damn pay-per-views. You want me to stay at that level? I can't. For, for, <laughs> for Grand Slam, I can't do it. I hope I Tony's, mean, frankly... We need a refractory I, period, you know? Like, don't listen. Boy. We're not the superwoman you think we are, and <laughs> we're getting we're getting some stuff we really like and some stuff we medium like and some stuff we don't give a shit about that we're ignoring and um, and again I hope Tony's losing money I don't really care if he sells any <laughs> tickets to Grand Slam I don't I give know. a shit I hope he loses money billionaires shouldn't exist and <laughs> I don't care all billionaires should be funding vanity projects for their favorite interests and losing money on them absolutely mm-hmm. where's your gas mm-hmm. station Tony. Mm. where's your gas station called what is it called again our pumps for us <laughs> i just keep forgetting and remembering pumps for us. it's the kind of like logo where you could have like a like a high heel on it you know like our pumps for us <laughs> oh that's really gonna make people mad yeah that is not gonna be a popular decision <laughs> And it's just the heel and then someone wielding the pump like a gun. <laughs> Honestly, like, since we invented Told You could, To Do It, I have become a little more tolerant of Tony. I'm like, well, when it's your money, you can book what you want. This is the thing, though. I mean, I think you'd understand if you were right. funding a wrestling promotion. Who am I to tell you that you can't have <laughs> Nigel versus Danielson on my pump? I, I call the rules. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Of course, the Chuck Taylor fashion show is on pump one every day, <laughs> and that's our privilege. So I get it. It is true that just when you, I mean, it is his money. It is his <laughs> money. I guess I can't. I think that he should book stuff that I like, and I think people should do their jobs and build the matches well if they're getting booked. But at the end of the day, it is his money, and he has so much of it. Oh, I wish I had it. <laughs> I really do. I think that's got to be the show. I've been Allie. I've been Anne. And I've been Leah. It's been Tunnel Talk. Our theme is by Chris Corkin. You can find us on Twitter, Tumblr, and Twitch at Tunnel Talk Pod. Via email, tunneltalkpod at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us on the Social Su- Suplex Network feed, uh, along with all the other great podcasts on the network. Again, something exciting coming this month. I think by the time you hear this, you'll have a little more information, even. And uh, you can find us on the Social Suplex Network Discord, where we're always cornholing. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, what else do I say to them usually? I do tell stay them to frosty. stay frosty. Stay, stay frosty. And please, my God, come back next week. <laughs>